Hello, my friends. Mrs. Revis here. Do you have a friend or a family member with autism? Maybe you have autism. Today we're going to learn about autism and how to be a good friend to someone with it or anybody who has a different thinking style. Throughout this book, I'm going to be asking questions. You could either pause or if you would like, you could wait till the end of the book to discuss. Let's begin. Since we're friends, an autism picture book. The author is Celeste Shelley and it is illustrated by David Harrington. It's finally summer vacation. It's going to be perfect because I'm going to hang out with my friend Matt who lives across the street. We have tons of fun together because we like the same things. Matt acts a little different from my other friends though. He has autism. That means his brain thinks different from mine. He thinks about and feels things in a different way than I do, but we still have a great time together. What does it mean when he says Matt has autism? We both love sports. Football, basketball, baseball, soccer, you name it, we play it. We play on the Cougars basketball team together. Matt is good at scoring and I'm good at dribbling and passing. We make a good team because we work together. Sometimes Matt has a hard time following directions at practice. He doesn't always understand what the coach is saying. It's hard for him to listen when the gym is really loud. Since we're friends, I show Matt what to do. What do they do when Matt's not following directions? We have a lot of fun riding the swings at the park. We like to swing super high and pretend we're a rocket ship blasting off into outer space. Sometimes our feet touch the clouds. If someone is on Matt's favorite swing, he gets very upset and starts yelling. It makes him feel happy to play something the same way every time. Since we're friends, I try to think of something to do while we're waiting, like playing soccer or football. What does he do to help Matt if he can't play the same way every time? Matt is very interested in animals. When Matt is interested in something, he wants to talk about it all the time. We look at books and watch movies together about animals. We walk around the block together and make up crazy names for the neighborhood dogs. Then we feed them treats through the fence. Just a side note, that's dangerous. They could either bite you or they might have an allergy that you don't know about and they could get very sick. So don't do that. I don't mind talking about animals a lot because I like them too. What does he do when Matt talks about something a lot? Matt and I go to the pool almost every day. We bring squirt guns, balls, and other toys with us. We soak our football with water and try to splash each other with it. We slide down the water slide and then chase each other with squirt guns and attack. Sometimes the kids take our toys without asking. Matt gets frustrated and anxious. He's worried that the kids are going to take the toys home and never give them back. Since we're friends, I figure out a way we all can play together so Matt can stop worrying and be calm. What does he do when Matt worries that the other kids are going to take his toys? When the pool is closed for repairs, Matt gets furious. He doesn't like it when our plans change suddenly. I feel disappointed too. Since we're friends, I think of a new plan and invite Matt to my house to run through the sprinkler. We spray each other with the hose and pretend we're firefighters. So how does he help when plans suddenly change? At night, kids from our neighborhood get together and play freeze tag. Matt and I like to play because we can run fast as lightning.
Some kids think Matt is weird because it's hard to understand the way he talks. They don't want him to play because sometimes he acts wild when he's excited. But since we're friends, I don't want him to feel left out. So I ask Matt if he wants to play tag with me and my friends. What does he do when Matt feels left out? Matt and I always have so much fun together. When it's time for one of us to go home, Matt gets stubborn and sad because he doesn't want the fun to stop. Since we're friends, I make it easier for him and invite him to come over for breakfast in the morning. I give Matt a high five and say, see you tomorrow. What does he do when Matt doesn't want the fun to stop? The end. So go ahead and pause the video now to discuss what you've learned. What is autism? How can you be a good friend to someone with autism or different thinking styles that we learned in this book? Or if you know other ways that you can be a good friend to someone with a different thinking style. Some of you may remember me uh, reading this book to you in the past, and I'm going to go ahead and answer some of those questions that were addressed in the past. How do I know if someone has autism? Unless they tell you, you don't. They look like everybody else. Are there other different thinking styles besides autism? Yes. There is ADHD, there is dyslexia, and we're going to learn more about those in future videos. Do I need to know if somebody has a different thinking style before I become a good friend to them? No! You can be a good friend to anybody anytime. So now that we've learned about autism and different ways that we can be a good friend, I give you a challenge today. What's one thing that you are going to do to be a good friend to someone with autism or any different thinking style? Is it going to be at recess? Is it going to be in the classroom? Is it going to be at home? Thank you so much for learning with me today. If you have a question or a idea for a future video, go ahead and email me in the description below. Thank you so much for learning with me today, and I'll see you next time.